All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today to the Keep It Pro training call brought to you by Networking Wisdom each and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific for the past five and a half years. The purpose of this call is not only to learn skills for success in business and network marketing, but also in life. Thanks for joining again. My name is Meredith, and I have the honor and privilege to introduce the creator and host, Mr. Ramacio Fulcher. Ramacio is a well-sought-after leader, trainer, coach, as well as a very successful international entrepreneur. At the age of 25, he made his first millions in mortgage and real estate, and shortly after that, he was introduced to network marketing. Because he was the ideal student and learned from the best, he quickly rose to the top. In fact, he's been one of the top 50 MLM income earners in the entire world. He has over 750,000 people in his organization, and he's done over a billion dollars in sales. He knows how to make money, and he knows how to make money fast. He loves to have fun, but most of all, he loves to share the wisdom he has gained over the years. In fact, he's helped countless individuals make life-changing income all over the world. What I love most about Ramacio is his ability to know exactly what his audience needs to hear each and every time he speaks. I highly suggest that you find a quiet place and grab a pen and paper because you're going to want to take notes and remember these nuggets of wisdom he's going to share today. Without further ado, here is your millionaire mentor, the California Kid, Marketplace Minister, Mr. Ramacio Fulcher. Ramacio, are you there? Absolutely. I am here. Can you hear me, Meredith? Loud and clear. All righty. Thank you kindly for stepping up and being our host on the Networking Wisdom platform yet again. Guys, I'm excited to be back with you with a very, very, very special message here for today's call. I want to go ahead and set the stage and say hello to all of you that have reached out just in the last week. I really appreciate you. It means the world to me just to know that the, the, the 30, 45 minutes that we spend here week in and week out has made a difference in your life. You know, I want to first, before we get moving here on today's call, I want to just let every single one of you know, uh, each and every single one of you are truly blessed. Each and every single one of you have a gift inside of you, and I would like to challenge you. I would like you to, I would like to challenge you. Are you walking in your gifting? Are you walking in what your purpose to do? I'm serious about that, and I'm going to continue to tout that uh, because it, it just, I'm telling you, I remember almost six years ago when it was dropped in my spirit to begin this call. And I'll just be candidly, uh, quickly honest with you. It was all because I was so fortunate. I was so blessed. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Grab a pen and paper. Do you understand the reason why you're blessed? And do you understand what you're supposed to do as a result of being blessed? The only reason why you're so blessed, you I'm talking to, both those of you that are listening live and those of you that will catch the replay, the only reason why you're blessed is you are by demand, by demand. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to be a blessing to other people. And there is a million ways you can be a blessing to others. You know, the reason why God created people is the only way God can get anything done in the earth, he needs a physical body. Come on, man, write that down. The only way God can get anything done in the physical earth, he needs a physical body. That's what he needs. He needs someone to do it through. And each and every single one of you have been given, uh, you've been given a gift from above. When you were a little boy or a little girl in your mother's womb, there was seeds deposited into you, seeds of greatness. And I really, really, really mean that. And um, I, I just want to encourage each and every single one of you to step up, write that down. I must step up. Come on. No, there's nothing cool. There's nothing cute about playing small. Now, step up. We're not talking about millions or billions of dollars. That's not what we're referencing. What we're saying is some six years ago, it was put in my heart to do this call, to give back because of all the mentorship, all the wisdom that, was, that, I, was, that I was gaining. You know, all the access that I have with all the great men and women that I'm able to sit before and be mentored by. And I, I, don't, I don't take that lightly. I don't take that lightly. And so I started a free call six years ago, absolutely free. Don't even know your name, right? I don't have a clue what your phone number is. But I started a free call because 
of a voice. The Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit and said, hey, listen, I want you to create a call because there's people all around the world. I'm not talking about just local people, domestic people. Guys, just international people listening to this call. People that I may never, ever, ever get a chance to meet. And I'm saluting all of you and all of the, lo- the love notes that you've sent me uh, just over the past couple of weeks. I, I-, I got all of them, and I- I- sometimes I don't have enough time to respond, but I really want you to know I appreciate you, and it's, it's because of you is the reason why I continue to stay responsible and continue to stay obedient in doing this call. You never know. Write this down, guys. You never know who's watching you. Woo! You know, I'm reminded by Facebook. I'm reminded by Instagram. You know, it seems like we live in a world today, well, how many likes did I get? Ooh-wee, right? You know, oh, my God, oh, my God, I got, got 50,000 likes or I got 100 million likes. And then for those of you that post something and maybe you're not really getting any likes, write this down, and I want you to never forget it. More people are watching you than those that actually comment. There are more people that are watching you than those that actually comment. You see, when you decide to step up and say yes to whatever gift, whatever gift has been put inside of you, and I'm not saying all of you should be doing your own calls and all. No, I, listen, I am not implying that you being a speaker or doing a call like this is the gift that God gave you. I don't know what gift God gave you, but you know what it is, and I just, and let me just be the first one to tell you, sometimes we like to compare our gifts against others. Well, I wanted to be a professional basketball player. I wanted to be six foot five or six foot six, you know, dark skin. I'm cool with the dark skin. And uh, I really wanted my name to be Michael. And you can guess what you wish my last name, what I used to wish my last name to be. So we all had these, these, these aspirations of what we would like to be. And the Bible says many are the plans of man. Many are the plans of man. Oh, come on, write that down. It's the Bible. The Bible says many are the plans of man. What that means is you and I, we have all these plans that we make, but the only plans that really will prevail are the plans of the Lord. That's why it's always funny, you know, if you ever want to make God laugh, just tell him your plans. Do you understand if everything went exactly the way you planned it, there would be no need for God? If everything went exactly the way you planned it, there would be no need for God. My point in saying this is sometimes when we do decide to own our gift, we think that we may never arrive at our ultimate destination. You know, sometimes the dreams you have are far bigger than what the gift that you presently own. Let me say that again. Sometimes you think that the dreams that you have are so big, you can't understand how am I going to get there just by being a nurse? How am I going to get there just by being a loving and kind person? And and I'm just, you know, I'm just a person that likes to make people feel good. And make. how am I going to get there just by being a comedian? How am I going to get there and I'm just a truck driver? How am I going to get there and I just, You know, I'm just a student of network marketing, and I love to market and sell stuff. How am I going to get there? And I work at a hospital. How am I going to get there? And I just love the Lord, and I just – that's my passion. I just love – see, it's none of your business on how your dreams are going to happen. And, frankly, in your greatest attempt to write it all down detail by detail, 99% of the time, it's not going to happen like that. Let me say that again. 99% of the time. It's not going to happen according to your plan. But, yes, we do want you to write down your goals and your dreams because a man without a vision, a man or a woman without a vision will certainly perish, definitely. So you have to have a focus. You've got to have a purpose. You've got to have a vision. You have to. But what I want you to understand is that when you begin to be obedient to the gift that was given to you, In Revelations, it says that the gifts that God has given you, he makes room in this world for your gift. And I want to encourage you and challenge you in the same breath to step up and start owning your gift. 
I'm reminded, look, we way off topic, but don't worry, we always on topic. Check that again. I said we way off my topic, but we right on the topic. Come on now. All right? I'm, I'm reminded by my mom. I remember when I was in college. When I was, when I was in college, I'm 40, what am I? I'm 44 now. But when I was in college, you know, as, as Bernie Mac say, long, 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 long time ago, right? <laughs> when I was in college, I'm reminded of, you know, I, 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 I did know my purpose. Uh, I knew my purpose at a young age. I did. Honestly, I can say that. But I didn't want to own it. I didn't want to step up, and I didn't want to own it because I felt like my purpose, what I was called to do, what I was gifted to do, it came with so much responsibility. And I just felt like, man. Can't a brother have a little fun? And so I didn't want to own my purpose because I was afraid of all the responsibility that came with it. And I remember one day having a conversation with my mom, and my mother said to me, that's a trick of the enemy. You see, the enemy will do – listen, I'm telling you the story for you. The enemy will do whatever he has to do to distract you, to get you – to lose focus and lose footing of doing what God has already planted inside you. See, write this down. God gives big grace for big mistakes. God gives big grace for big mistakes. He already knew that you were going to slip and fall. He already knew that you were going to be doubtful. He already knew that you was going to pause on 35th Street. That's the analogy. He already knew you was going to you know, slip to the left a little bit, slip to the right, come back again. And he already knew you was going to do all that. But do you, know what also, do you know what else the Bible also says? It says the gift that God has given you, there's no repentance for that gift. Now, come on, man. See, this is the God we serve. You've got you to get excited about this. Let me break it down for you what that means. It means the gift that he gave you, he will never take it back from you. He, it means that he doesn't repent. He's not sorry because you make mistakes for the gift that he gave you. Which now explains to me, when you begin to look through Scripture and you see some of the great prophets, David, Paul, and Saul, and you see, you, you see Abraham, and you see, you, see, you see Mary, you see Martha, you see, all, you see a lot of the prophets in the Bible, all of them made mistakes. You know, all of us are descendants of Abraham. You know, you had Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. We are children of the promise. I'll break that down later. But do you remember Abraham? He, he became impatient, and his, his, him and his wife wanted to have, him and his wife, Sarah, wanted to have a baby, but they got really old and didn't believe and started to lose faith a little bit, and his wife gave him permission to go sleep with another woman to have a baby by Hagar. Do you remember that? Okay, so that's not right, right? That, that's definitely not the right thing to do, right? But that's what they did. In other words, they, they missed the mark. They made a mistake. But look. But look at what God did for Abraham. God made him a promise. He said, I'm going to give you so many children, it'll be like all of the stars in the sky. That's how many descendants you're going to have, Abraham. And all of us, whether you know it or not, whether you know it or not, all of us are descendants, descendants of Abraham. And so the point I'm making to you is this. Don't let your fears, don't let your mistakes Stop you from walking in your purpose. Write it down. Listen to me. The California KID, I'm telling you, this is a mighty, mighty word for each and every single one of you. Because I know every single one of you that are listening, there's something inside of you, and we need you to step up despite you might have a drinking problem. We need you to, to step up despite you might have a gossip problem. We need you to step up despite you might have a sexual problem. Just, we need you to step up despite whatever your fears or issue are. There's something inside of you. So if there's anything I could say back in response to all of the thank yous and all of the love notes that I've received is, listen, let me be a, 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 just a voice of encouragement. If God can do it for me, my goodness, I know he can do it for you. Now, again, you're going to have to be disciplined. You're going to have to be obedient, and you're going to have to have courage and step out on faith, just like I did. You know, there's podcasts going on left and right, and I still haven't turned this call into a podcast. Don't ask me why. I'm just still doing it the old-fashioned conference call way. But I promise you my message is still getting out there. People are listening to it, and people are actually 
gleaning insight and, and, and learning a bunch from it. So for that, I'm grateful. So my point there, guys, is don't let excuses hold you back. Excuses are like armpits. Everybody have them, right? Don't let excuses hold you back. Step out. Step up and step out. Now, what I want to do, guys, is I want to share with you the theme of today's call. I'm really excited about it because there's a special message that I want to share that is very, very special, and it's going to be definitely confirmation for somebody who's listening today. Uh, listen, let me set this up the right way. Uh, it's been uh, two years. Well, December, December, 30, uh, December 30th of 2019 is when, long story short, I remember God speaking to me uh, and told me to go a different direction with my career. And um, for those of you that know me for the last 15 years or so, I've had so much fun. I've learned so much and I've made such a contribution in the network marketing profession. And despite what you might have heard about it, I can tell you not only do I love it, I'm an ambassador of it. I can teach it. I can teach it blindfolded coming out the shower. That's how much I love it. That's how much I know it. And it's totally relevant. And those people that don't understand it, uh, I would encourage you, as a little boy say, go look again. Go take another. Go look again. It is great building blocks for a lot of things. No, network marketing does not promise you millions and millions of dollars. And if that's, if that's the pitch that somebody gave to you to get you started, shame on them. They lied to you. It is a great building uh, block that teaches you a tremendous amount of skills about running any type of business. And more importantly than that, it teaches you more about yourself than any business. Uh, and so I am a huge, to this very second, I'm a, I believe in network marketing. I'm a huge ambassador of that profession. But eat, with that all said, like every other profession, it's not perfect. Network marketing has its, has its, has its uh, it's not perfect. Let's just put it, like, put it that way. But the job that you work on, the system that you're a part of, the business that you own, it's not perfect either. Okay? And so at God's counsel, he told me to move on. He told me it was time for me to move on. Now, you have to understand, I have very, very, very gigantic goals. Uh, I'm a young man that's got a lot of energy, and uh, I can tell you that um, I realize that I only have one life to live. And because of that, time is of the essence. And uh, for those of you that are very close to me, you know this is also true. Romasio wants to do everything fast. Uh, that's my preference. I want to eat fast. I want to shower fast, right? I want to hurry up and get my spanking fast, get it over with. I, let's just hurry up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, right? <laughs> and look, that's just my personality, good, bad, or whatever. That's my personality. I want to do it quick, right? Well, but the, and the reason why I want to do it quick is because I, I like feeling youthful. I like uh, having energy. I like being young. Uh, no, I don't have a problem, Mom, getting older. I just want to be one of those cool old guys, right? those old guys that still got some swagger to them. You know, maybe I'm not as fast as I was in my younger days, but I'm still pretty quick for an old fellow, right? That's just me. I like energy. I love energy. That's my thing, right? And uh, long story short, because of my goals being so big and the industry that I was a part of, network marketing, yes, it's a great industry, touched a lot of lives, still touching a lot of lives. God had something else in mind for me. And I really struggled with it. I really struggled with it. I struggled with it. But listen to me and write this down. I said, God had something else in mind for me. But, you hear that? B-U-T. I struggled with it. What does that mean? It means I was trying to go this way, and God, it was time for me to close that chapter for now. He had something else on the horizon for me. And I didn't know what it was. It wasn't clear. It was just, it's time to leave here. And sometimes, write this down, sometimes when you get to the point where you muster up enough courage, you know one of two things. You know that it's time to leave, but you may not know where exactly you are going. Well, that's where I was in 2020. Uh, 2019, December 30th or 2019. I knew it was time to leave. It was, I, got, I received all sorts of confirmations. I was already feeling it. I was praying about it. 
you know, yada, yada, yada. I just knew it was time to leave. But I didn't know where he would take me. But I trust him. Now write that down. Write that down. I want a big circle around that. Write that down. Do you trust God? Do you trust him? Do you? That's a, that's a big question that you need to answer. You know, we talk about it on, on the dollar bill, for those of you that live in the United States, on our currency, it says, in God we trust, right? You talk about, oh, do you, do, do you love God? Yeah, I love God. I, I, yeah, I believe in God. I believe in God. I believe in God, right? But do you trust him? I just gave you 15 minutes of great conversation telling you that despite the mistakes that you make, you are still God's child. He still is going to come through for you. He still got a promise with your name on it. Now write that down. You got a drinking problem. You got a, you got a, you got a, you got whatever type of problem you got going. We all got problems. Ain't nobody perfect. But he still got a blessing with your name on it. And scripture says, he will open the windows and pour out a blessing so big you don't even have room to contain it. Let me ask you a question. Do you trust him? Ooh, we're going somewhere today, baby. I want you to write that down and circle it. Whoever you are and hearing my voice, there's a reason I'm asking you this. Do you trust them? Well, there's levels to trust. Do you trust? Imagine you're a swimmer. Can I trust you in three feet of water? You say, yes. Can I trust you in six feet of water? You say, yes. Can I trust you in 100 feet of water? Some of you say yes, and I can tell you right now, I can't trust myself in 100 feet of water. Not right now. Now, you, I, can, I, I can be trusted in six feet. Yeah, I can be trusted in, yeah, because I'm five foot nine, so what's that, three inches above? Yeah, I, I'm three, yeah. I can jump and touch the top. Yeah, yeah. Six feet of water, I can trust myself. Oh, no, I can't trust myself in 100 feet. No, not yet. No, not But I'm asking you. Can you trust God in the shallow? Can you trust God in the mediums? And can you trust him in the deep when it looks real, real uncertain and you really don't know where you're going? Well, let's just say two years ago, I said, Lord, I trust you. I, tr I just trust you. That I didn't need to make no announcement. There wasn't no, no party I had, nothing like that. It was just, I trust you because you are the one that gave me this desire. You gave me these dreams inside of me. You are the one that put that inside of me, and the same could be said for you. So I said, Lord, I trust you, all right? And I was making at the time, and I will, I will publicly say it. I don't have a problem saying what I was making two years ago. At that time, I was making multiple six figures per month in my network marketing company. And I know some of you are going to say, and listen, before you even turn your nose up and cast an opinion about what I did, let me tell you, hush your mouth because you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> hush your mouth because you don't know what you're talking about. So I was making multiple six figures a month back then, and, but I was, it, it was time. It was time for me to move on. And I said, Lord, I trust you. And so long story short, I, I call it I jumped off the cliff. I jumped off a cliff. And when I jumped off the cliff, I was just going to be obedient. Lord, I looked back over my life and I said, Lord, you brought me through all, you brought me through this. Lord, you brought me through this. You brought me through that. And I just said, you've never failed me. So why would I begin to lose trust and faith in you now? I said, let's do it. And I jumped. I want you to write that down if you're taking notes. There's a reason for this story. Oh, yeah. Two years ago, December 30th of 2019, I jumped. And the Lord told me to go out and do something. And right now, I don't want to get into what it was. I know what it was. And it was big. It was something that I didn't understand. It was something that I had never done before. But I said yes. It was something that was going to require money that at the time I didn't have that type of money to, to do what it was required to do. But I said yes. And uh, long story short, I began to go to work, and I began to do my thing and do what I knew how to do and trust God. And I, and I just began to take a long faith walk. But I was aggressive. 
write that down. I was aggressive. I didn't do it passively. I said yes, and I, I just said, Lord, I trust you, and I became, I got very aggressive with it. Now, some of you, you can paint a picture in your mind what getting aggressive looks like for you. I was very aggressive. For those of you that know me, when I do a thing, when I do do a thing, oh, I'm very aggressive. You're going to know I was there. You're going to know I was there. That's my personality. So that's what I did. And uh, it hasn't been easy. It has not been easy the last two years. Uh, this dream that I have is very, 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 very large. I mean, when we talk about big, uh, I don't want to have a competition, but let's just say it's a very, very gigantic dream. And that's why when I talk to you guys and I tell you the dream big, dream with no limit on it. Like a friend of mine says, the sky is not the limit because the sky ain't got no hat on it, right? So dream big. And uh, begin to, I dreamed really big. But I also was willing, here, write this down, I was willing to work really big as well. I was willing to take big steps. I, was, I had big courage. I was willing to do a big thing. I just wasn't going to be satisfied with just dreaming big. I have to show up big. You've got to think big. You've got to speak big. You've got to act big. And that's what I did. That's what I've been doing the last two years. Now, maybe some of you can relate to what I'm saying so far. But I want to speed the story up. Just know for the last two years I've been diligent. I've been obedient. Have I been perfect the last two years? Write this down. No. Put an exclamation point after it. Absolutely not. That's important. Why is that so important for you to know? Because you don't have to be perfect to be blessed. You just have to make progress. Write that down. Have I been perfect? No. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to make, you just have to make progress. Now, before I speed the story up and give you something that's going to knock you out, I want to tell you something. I want to give you what has and what is working for me. Those of you that know me well, I don't like to tell you about stuff I read in a book that I haven't experienced. I like to talk to you straight up and down, stuff that I know about, that I know it works. I did it myself. I'm doing it myself. You can count on it, right? Here it is. Take a look at your goals and take a look at your dreams. And we all are human beings. So it's, it's, it's normal for us to, to, to sometimes be selfish. It's normal, including myself. Oh, I want a burger. I want this. I want that, right? It's normal. But if you really want to engage God's involvement, let me say that again. I'm talking to each of you, each and every single one of you, regardless of what your dream is. Some of you are dreaming for a baby. Some of you are dreaming for marriage. Some of you are dreaming for divorce. Some of you are dreaming for, I don't know, some of you are dreaming for billions and millions, and some of you are dreaming for a, a, the next promotion at your business that you're part of or your network marketing company that you're in, or some of you are dreaming for a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know. But if you really want to engage God in your dream, let me ask you a question. Do you want God to be involved in your dream? Do you want God to get involved? Or are you the type of man or woman, I don't need God. I'm going to do it myself. I could do all things by myself. I don't need no God. I can do it. I don't need him. Now, that would be the most foolish thing I ever heard. So please don't speak to me like that. Please, just don't even call me with that. But I'm asking you, do you want God to get involved? If you want to engage God and you want to get his attention, develop a dream. that has nothing to do with you and everything to do with others. Develop a dream that has nothing to do with you initially. It has everything to do with others. I'm going to say that two more times 
for you to write that down, circle that, put the date, put the time, and put my name next to it so you know who told you that. If you want to engage God, if you want to get God involved with helping bring your dream to manifestation, in other words, bringing it to pass, in other words, making it happen for you, develop a dream that has nothing to do with you. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm purposely repeating this. If you want to get God involved and you want God's help to bring your dream to pass, develop a dream that has nothing to do with you and it has everything to do with other people. Now, ask me, how do we know this is true? We know this is true because of John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave. So the spirit of giving really gets God's attention. The spirit of praise gets God's attention. The spirit of giving, oh, write this down, write this down, write this down, write this down. The spirit of giving gets God's attention. The spirit of praise gets God's attention. The spirit of sacrifice woo, woo, gets God's attention. The spirit of commitment gets, God, gets God's attention. Woo, the spirit of consistency gets God's attention. And those are just a few. What was the first thing I said? The spirit of what? Giving. Develop a dream. I mean, and it's got to be real. That, that has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them. Do you know every single Sunday what we say on this call? Every Sunday, we always say, subscribe. what we want you to do is subscribe to the philosophy, subscribe to our philosophy. And our philosophy is we believe what we make happen for others, God will make it happen for us. Do you see that? Every Sunday we say this. Every single Sunday. What we make happen for others, God will make it happen for us. What I'm telling you right now, before I hit you with the home run in just a minute, what I'm telling you, if you have a big dream, whatever it is, and you want to get God involved, stop thinking about you. Develop a dream where it's all about them. And I'm not going to define them. I'll let you do that. But back to my story. So a little over a year ago, a little over a year ago, once I understood why God A little over a year ago, once I understood why God told me to go this direction in terms of what I'm currently doing, I then asked God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I now understand why I'm here, but what do you want me to do? And I'm going to tell you, when God spoke to me and told me, clearly what it is that I'm supposed to do, it was the most overwhelming thing I've ever heard in my life. You want me to do that? That's what you want me to do. I remember I questioned God. I said, God, well, how am I going to do that? I, I, I'm this. I, I don't have those qualifications. I've never done that before. I mean, I, I live right here in Sacramento. And I just begin to say all these things. But, but are you sure? I said, no, wait a minute, God. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, hold on, hold on. God, 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 God. Wait a minute. Are you sure this is not me talking to myself, or is this what you want me to do? And I'm going to tell you guys, I must have paused there for about a month, one month. And I remember, I remember praying. I remember taking long walks while I was currently involved in my current profession. And I said, God, I, I need you to reveal to me why I'm here. I, I, need, I need you to make it, make it clear to me. I, I don't want to be on just a long walk. You know what I'm saying? I don't just want to be wasting time. I, I want to be in your will. So I, I need to be real clear that this is really you and not me. And when you ask God for clarity, he'll give it to you. And he did. And I, I, 
listen, guys, I know exactly where I was standing. I know exactly here in Sacramento I was taking a walk and something big had just happened, and I said, God, are you sure? Are you absolutely sure? And he spoke to me and said, yes. And I decided to trust him. I decided to trust him. I didn't care what it looked like. I I, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I said, man, I trust you. If this is the sacrifice that I have to make for all of these people to get blessed, I'll do it because you've been so good to me. You've done more for me than I ever could have done for myself. And I just want to show my appreciation through my application. And a lot of people may say that. A lot of people may start the race. But, Lord, so help me, God, I'm going to finish it with your help. I'm going to finish it. So long story short, I said yes. I said yes. So now at this point, God, he made it very clear to me on why I was here and what I was supposed to do. Made it very clear. But just because God makes something clear, when you're a human being, you want actual instructions. And the only instruction he gave me is stick close to him. And I said, that, but what else? He said, that's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. Stick close to me. It's going to happen. Stick close to me. And I, and, and I remember a year and a half ago, I was fired up to get those instructions. Okay, 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 okay. But I want to tell you the truth. Over the last year and a half, I've never let go of the rope. It's a figure of speech. I've never let go of the vision. I've never let go of the dream. But there have been some times when I can honestly tell you I waned a little bit. I, doubt kicked in a little bit. I was unsure because it just doesn't. And I would say, God, but you told me to do this. You told me to do this. I remember the biggest one is I began to really uh, – uh, evaluate myself and I, I thought maybe because I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that or maybe I'm not perfect enough maybe that's why it's so difficult maybe that's why it's so hard and then one day God beamed in again and he said Romacio everything you tend to do in your life tends to happen fast for you doesn't it and I said yeah 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 that's right I'm Speedy Gonzalez that's right and he, he took me to the Bible and he wanted me to read and he wanted me to learn about Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit. And he wanted me to learn about patience and the purpose of patience and what patience does inside of us. Then I heard my mom say, you can't really begin to say that you have a solid relationship with God if you've never suffered with him. And then they showed me in the scriptures where this is true, that if you want to reign with God, now what does that mean? You want all the blessings. You want them to bless this and bless that. And you want them to, you know, you want all these blessings for your family and for your community and for your bank account and for your marriage and your relationship. You want all this stuff, but you don't want to go through anything. You don't want, and it, listen, don't take my word. Go to the Bible. It's right there. If you want to reign with him, you've got to suffer with him. In other words, you don't even really know him until you know him as a suffering servant. Right? His son Jesus. His son Jesus, a suffering servant. And so I said, what are you saying, God? So you're saying I got to suffer? Is that what you're saying? I have to just, you know, I, I just got to. No, he never said that I had to just go broke and all this. But he did say, what did I tell you? It was going to be a sacrifice. But even though it was going to be a sacrifice, he promised me it surely would come to pass. I'm talking about my dream. He promised me it surely would come to pass. And so what I want you to know, for those of you taking notes, real story here, I never let go of the dream. I never spoke against it. I never gave up on it. But there were times I was more fired up about it, jumping up and down and screaming, oh, man, it's about to happen, it's going 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 to happen, oh, man, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. And there were other times I wasn't so loud. Because I'm saying, I'm jumping up and down, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And I'm looking over here, I'm looking over there, and it don't look like nothing's happening. And in those times, I would go back and I would just say, Lord, I trust you. 
Lord, I trust you. I know you're not a trickster. I know despite any mistake I've ever made, you love me. I know that the plans you have for me are going to blow my mind. I know you're not a trickster. You're not a liar. I know that that was you that spoke to me. I, I'm sure of this. I may be unsure of a lot of other things, but I'm sure of that. And so even though it may look like this, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I, I just kept saying, and when I didn't know what else to say, I hope somebody's listening. When I, when, when, and and, and, and yes, I, yes, I read scripture and I try and memorize scripture and all this stuff, and I do. But sometimes it, got so, it gets so heavy, I don't know what else to say other than, Lord, I trust you. I just trust you. If this is what I got to go through, then let's, be, let's get it on, baby. Take me through it. Take me through it. Hold my hand as we go through this. Take me through it. Take me through it. I trust you. I just trust you. I just trust you. I just trust you. And I just kept walking. I just kept going. I just kept working. I was real clear on what God wanted me to do. My dream was clear. It was really clear. My dream was all about helping other people in a major, I want you to capitalize the word major way. It, I wasn't looking for any credit. It was my way of showing God how much I appreciate you, how much I love you, how much I thank you, how much I praise you. I don't just want to say it with my lips. I want, to, I want, my, I want my body to be a sacrifice where I'm showing, I, I want to show you. And look, I know you're God. I, I know I can't do anything for you that you can't do for yourself. But I also know you're looking for willing vessels. You're looking for willing vessels in the flesh to be able to do great and mighty things through. And I submit my will to you. I'm not perfect, but I think you know that. But I'm perfectly fit for the journey ahead. And so I kept going, and I kept going, and I kept going. And I kept working, and kept working, and kept working, and kept working. And ladies and gentlemen, for those of you listening, this word that I'm about to speak is not only confirmation for me, but, guys, it's confirmation for somebody listening on this call, and I don't know who I'm talking to. So I want to encourage you, before I say what I'm about to say, I want to encourage you to go back and re-listen to this call again and again and again. Because the theme of today's call, the topic, is the miracle has happened. The miracle that you've been praying for, believing in, it has happened. That is the theme of today's call. Listen to me. Today is Sunday, January 16th, 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, two days ago, January 14th, at 4.45 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, the Spirit of God woke me up out of a dream. Listen to me. I would never play with you. I would never exaggerate. I was dead sleep. I know where I was sleeping at. I was sleeping in my bed. I was sleeping actually in my guest room. And the reason why I sleep in my guest room, I like the guest room mattress better than I like the master bedroom mattress because the guest room mattress is much harder. And I like a hard mattress. Go figure. Anyway, that's where I was sleeping. I was sleeping there, and at 4.45 a.m. in the morning, Pacific Standard Time, Sacramento, California, the Spirit of God spoke to me in my ear and said, wake up. And I said, I want you to go to your Bible. Go to Matthew 28 and 6. Listen to me and listen to me well. I said, this is me. I'm in my sleep. I'm, I'm still laying down. I said, Lord, this is what I said to myself. Lord, is this you? Is that you? If this is you, I'll do it. If that's not you, don't, I, don't, I don't, you know, Lord, is this you? Said, yes, yes, yes. Wake up. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do it right now. I said, okay. This is what I said to myself. And I sat up and I grabbed my cell phone, the same phone I'm holding right now. And I went to my Bible app and I went directly to Matthew 28 and 6. And I'm going to read it to you real quick. Matthew 28, chapter 6, verse. It says, he is not here. He has risen just as he 
said, come and see the place where he lay. And I want to be honest with you. I read it five times, and I didn't understand why God took me to that specific scripture. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me and listen to me well. I did not understand why he directed me to that scripture. I read it five times. And I said, yeah, okay, this is the story about when Jesus rose from the dead, like he said he was going to do. So when I don't understand something, I go to my spiritual advisors. Well, I thank God for having a spiritual advisor, somebody that can actually make something clear. And my spiritual advisor knows specifically what my dream is. They know specifically what my vision is. They know specifically what I've been working towards over the last couple of years. And my spiritual advisor said specifically to me, and he broke it down to me exactly what the scripture meant. It means the miracle has happened just like he said it would. It means the, incompre- the incomprehensible has happened just like he said it would. The impossible has happened just like he said it would. Believe just because he said it. The proof is to look at the empty tomb and it became exactly what he had said. The message is to believe what he said. And ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I read that to you just now is that scripture is now crystal clear on why it happened to me. The miracle that I had been believing for has finally happened. Now, I know that there's two types of people listening to this call, actually three types. Let's deal with the third person. The third person is merely being entertained by what is being said here. My, uh, my, my, my goal for you would be to make sure you re-listen to this call again and again and again. The second type of person is in complete disbelief. What do you mean the miracle has happened? I don't see it yet, Romancio. It ain't in my bank account. It ain't in my refrigerator. Uh, you know, uh, the girl hasn't married me yet. I don't see the baby yet. I, what do you mean it's happened? No, ain't nothing happened yet because I can't see it. And I'm just going to continue to pray for you. I pray that God gives you eyes to see and ears to hear. And I'll pray for God to reveal to you, to give you a revelation, to give you clarity of vision. But I want to speak to the first person, the believers, the ones that they know that every word that I just said was nothing but the truth. They know that I've never come on a call and said that specifically, that God woke me up at 4.45 a.m. to tell me it's done. It has happened. And I even told you when I first read the scripture five times, I didn't even understand why did you lead me to this scripture. I just don't quite get it. But it wasn't until I counseled with my spiritual advisor, and he made it perfectly clear as it relates to my specific situation. There's a little bit more to the story that I'll say, which is I had been feeling over the last couple of weeks that I just knew it was done. I can't explain that to those of you listening that don't know me, don't understand what I'm involved in, but I got to a place of all the ups and the downs and the waiting and da 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 But all of a sudden, this time, what I'm involved in, this time what I'm doing at this very moment, there was a settledness inside of me. It's done. It's done. It's absolutely done. So to wake up out of a clear sleep to a scripture that I didn't understand, had to do research only for it to be confirmed that it's done, just like he said he would do. Now, I want you to take this message, not only get excited, you need to start getting your praise on right now because I know you're believing for something. I know that there's a man or a woman out there that's literally been in the same situation I've been in the last couple of years. 
They've been believing. You've been and believing is not just believing with your spirit, baby. It's believing with your work. You've been putting in major work, major sacrifice, right? Major giving. You just every time you they hit you in the gut, you just keep on giving, and you just keep on keeping on. You just keep on doing more. I know I'm talking to someone. It's none of my business on who I'm talking to. I'm just being obedient at what he told me to do. The miracle has happened, just like he said it would. Guys, I am so excited. I can't even contain the level of excitement. And all I can tell you is to, to, to those of you that believe in what I just said, it doesn't matter what it looks like at this very second. It does not matter. It doesn't matter. You need to know it's actually, truly, no game, it's done. It's done. When God tells you it's done, it's done. <laughs> when God tells you it's done, it's done. When he said, now look, I, 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 look I'm just telling you what happened to me. That's all I can tell you. I, I, I can't tell you. I, I, I don't know any more than that. <laughs> I can't take any more questions. That's all I can tell you is it's done. And I don't care what you think. I don't care who's in disbelief. Listen, the, 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 the Bible talks about you'll know it was true through the signs and wonders. And let me just tell you, there will be signs, and you will see wonders as a result of the miracle that I'm talking about. And, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to know God is real. Uh, I'm not perfect. I still got a long way to go. But I also know I'm of good use. And I believe the same thing about you. You are of good use. You came from good stock. I want to encourage you to get a relationship with God. I want to encourage you to get yourself anchored in him. I want to encourage you to start right now. I want to encourage you to start to learn his ways. I want to encourage you to, uh, to not get involved in religion. Get involved in a relationship. I want to encourage you to be open to all forms of godliness, meaning don't just listen to black people. Don't just listen to women. Don't just listen to men. Don't just listen to Christians or, or Buddhists or, or, or whatever it may be. No, no. Open, your, open yourself up. God can use anybody just like he's using me. But I want to encourage you. He's real. He's real. And I want you to know, guys, the miracle has happened. So with that being said, here's what we want to do. Here's what we want to end with. We told everyone this was going to be the year of the miraculous. Uh, each of these calls that we've done so far, the first three, four calls of the year, they've been very strategic. I want you to kind of, you know, if you're listening to us, Make time in your life. Listen to call number one. Then go to number two, number three. You know, each call, it's a buildup to the next thing. I want you to pay attention to what's going on here. Don't just be the person being entertained. I mean, come on, think of it. This is a private setting. Nobody knows you're on the call. You know, we're able to, you know, you know you're able to be here, you know, and, and listen, and, and, and no one's able to call your name out, and, you know, but yet we can get close to you. This is an intimate setting for you to gain some insight in an unbiased way. We're not charging you anything. We don't want anything from you other than we want you to subscribe to our philosophy, which is what we make happen for you, excuse me, what, what, what you make happen for others, God will make it happen for you. We, do want you. we do want you to pay it forward. That we do because we want to see you blessed. And we know, I know, that there's greatness inside of you. God has got something so big for you. Man, if you only knew how big it is. But let me tell you the last piece. You've got to trust him. You've got to trust him. You've got to sacrifice. And you've got to be obedient. And I'm telling you, it's not going to be easy, but I can tell you it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it. Hey, listen, guys. I want you to take this call. Do me a favor. Share this call. Three, four, five people that you know. There's people, there's people that need to hear this free message. Don't just, just trust me on that. There's people that need to hear this free message.
be the conduit, the person that actually just follows the instructions and sends the message, sends the call to people that you know. Absolutely free. I tell you what, you'll be blessed because of it. Hey, listen, I love you guys. I'll see you guys all next week. I'm the California Kid. Goodbye, everybody. See you next week. Thank you.